Y'all know the drill. We're just continuing on in the series. We're going to watch a video and then we will discuss it so we can have a little bit more balanced view. This particular video is pretty interesting. It's um, why is dating so hard for black women? So let's see what black women think and then we will discuss this thing through. I'm sure women of all races can relate to feeling lonely at some point in their lives, but black women especially have a unique set of challenges when it comes to meeting, dating, and marrying. So Tia, you're the relationship expert. <laughs> Why is it so hard out here for the sisters? Well, we're dealing with a couple of issues that other communities just aren't dealing with. Number one, because of the history in this country with racial disparities, economic disparities, we have a high incarceration rate of African-American men. So studies what you're seeing on the screen right now is actually some numbers some real numbers about the true incarceration rates so that we can kind of again get bring balance to this because there's really not that many black men that are actually being incarcerated when we hear these narratives it always seems like it's like 20 or 30 or 40 percent or even half of the black men that exist are in jail and that's actually not true i really don't understand where this thing keeps coming up but again, what I've learned over time is that people love to push pain and, you know, even anybody, you know, I'm not beating up on this particular young lady, but anybody can kind of get caught up in that mindset because you hear it over and over and over and over again. And there is an adage that if you if you continue to say something over and over again and if people hear it over and over again, they start to believe that it's true have shown that the rate of black men in the age group of about 25 to 54 in comparison to black women is actually 83 to 100. So for every 100 black women, there are only 83 men. Right? Now that I would agree with. Um, that last little part of what she said, and I did want to stop it right there. And I've even made the, um, the discussion to my group that there is about 88 for 100 um, in the average in Georgia. So if you're living in Atlanta, my best you know, guess would have been around 88 to 87 men for every 100 women. But I actually don't see that as a problem, but I am gonna see what she says and then I'll talk more to that. Right, so we and outnumber then, them. Seriously. So we're outnumbering them. We also know the statistics around black women getting higher um, education rates and things like that. So there are a lot of things that make the, it not an equal playing field. So we have that issue. But then we also have the other side of that coin is like what was going on at home when you have dads who aren't there? So what happens? You have a lot of the super moms and super moms are great. We love them. We support them. But unfortunately, a lot of times that creates a different depiction of what uh, womanhood should be like. Okay, so she's starting to move on. So I did want to talk a little bit about that ratio. So she says 84 to 100. And I can actually go with that. I'll go with her ratio right now. Because honestly, it doesn't matter. If there are eight men for every 10 black women, okay, which will be four to five, if you want to break it all the way down, that's really not a problem. And there might be black women that say, what are you talking about? That's a huge problem. No, it's not. Because I'm just going to be real. It's all about the cream of the crop. I'm saying this over and over and over again. The women who get married, they are going to have an average essence about them. Okay, really, really super pretty women. I mean, ultra pretty women who are mean and who are selfish do not get married. Those black women do not get married. They get all the sex that they want. I mean, they get sex stuff. They got sex stories. Okay, they probably have had sex with half of the men in Atlanta. They get gifts. They get clothes. They get traveled all around the world, but they don't get wifed because they're not nice people. And then on the very other end of that, you have women who, I'm sorry, they have not put their attractiveness at the top of what they're concerned about. But they're really nice people. They're really sweet. They're really supportive. But a man is basically saying, hey, if I get in a relationship with you, I'm going to enjoy the friendship. But when you start to actually get touchy feely and you want some, I really ain't going to want to give it to you. The woman who gets married is the woman that's in the center. She's not a 10 out of 10. Maybe she's a seven out of 10. Maybe she's an eight out of 10. Maybe she's a six and a half out of 10. 
but she's really nice. She's a decently nice person. Maybe she's not nice in everything. Maybe she's not supportive in everything, but she's a nice average of what the man is looking for. So some women literally take themselves out of the game. They focus so much on their outside that they never focus on their inside or they focus so much on their inside that they never focus on their outside. Those women are not a part of the game. They've already lost because they don't understand what they're supposed to do. And it's the same thing for men. If a man is basically saying, I do not care at all about the fact that I need to make any kind of money. OK, or I don't care at all that I need to look like I can protect or I don't care at all that I need to learn how to lead then the man is taking himself out of the game. So we have to understand that most people are out of the game. They're out of the game. You know, so what she's saying, it sounds like it's this really big problem, but for a lot of people, if you're doing what you need to do, then these people ain't even your competition. We've talked about this before. If a man gets up every day and does 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, 20 jumping jacks, okay, and maybe 20, you know, you know, quick Heismans, what they call Heisman. If you just do that as a guy every single day, you're going to be in the top like 30% physically of all men in America. That probably would take you 10 minutes. If the average woman just says, you know what, I am going to drink alcohol and other calorie based stuff on the weekend. But during the week, I'm mainly going to drink water and I'm actually going to care about my skin and I'm actually going to style myself, get me some really cute clothes that fit. Okay. Um, that look good on me. You will be in the top 30%. This is not hard. See, this is about 15 to 20 minutes every day of your day for the rest of your life. But it's so many people that just don't want to do it. They're just so lazy. They're like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing it. That's too hard. That takes too, too much time. But like I say, on this channel, we're all about getting you married. So I've got to get you into the top 30 to 40 percent of wherever you live in the world. And that's going to take 15 to 20 minutes of your time every single day. But if you're willing to do that, you're going to shoot to the top. And when you're shooting to the top, you're not concerned about ratios like this. It is the woman that is last in line. See, remember, if you've got eight to 10, right? If you got eight men for 10 women, then the eight of them women going to be happy. Eight of them women got a man. But two of those women don't. So who do you think the two of the women who are not going to get a man what do you think they look like? What do you think they act like? How do you think they run their lives? Don't worry about those two at the bottom. Remember, when you're supposed to be with God, you're supposed to be what? The head, not the tail. So that means you're first in line, not last in line. Like for an African-American woman, right? So you see little girls growing up without men in the household and black boys growing up thinking what? That women do it all and black women are workhorses. Right. And it sounds so harsh to say, mm -hmm. but these dynamics impact how we feel. Right. And that all black women are like their mom. All black women are like their mom. You know, <laughs> another thing that we don't talk. I mean, she's going through pretty fast. That's why I have to keep stopping. But um, I do agree with what she just said right there. Um, when people are raised in a single mom household, whether they're men or they're women, they're not getting all of the information that it takes to be in a successful relationship. Now, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't get it. All right. And I know this is very sensitive to a lot of people, period. You know, whether you're black, white or indifferent, it is uh, very sensitive to a lot of people. But do not be ashamed. Do not be worried. Do not be frustrated. OK, because first of all, there are lots of books out there that you can read. There's lots of stuff, information that you can get to that will help you. And then also, again, there's a lot of stuff in a healthy church. I see a lot of churches ain't healthy. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. A lot of them are not. But there are places where there are there is healthy information that can help you.
And one of the biggest things that I will tell you right now, as far as being in a relationship is you, you have to be balanced. Okay. That's why I try to push balance so much on this channel is because you cannot say that all, well, women are stupid. All everything women do is just dumb or everything men do is just dumb. They just don't make no sense what he doing. You know, it's just dumb. It don't work that way. You have to try to see it from the other person's point of view. And if you cannot see it from the other person's point of view, it is very difficult to be in a relationship. About too is that we, we, you know, black women have gone through so much trauma that we often loud them, but we don't talk about the trauma that they pass on because of their hurt. So a lot of black men or black boys grow up having very trying relationships with their mother. So how does that impact when you're ready to get into the dating world? How you see black women, how you treat black women, who makes you feel loved, who you think is special. So all of these things are on the laps of sin. Again, I have to agree with her on that. Um, I, you know, it's straight up truth. When you're dealing with um, black women and the trauma that they've been through or the trauma that black men have been through and everybody, I don't give a flip. Like, I, I'll be honest, I had two parents, but I still have trauma. You know, every single human being has trauma. So it's about that complication of the trauma and even understanding that you have the trauma and that how you think might not be clear. You might not be thinking the way you should. And so I think that that's important. But once you come into that recognition and then you change your perspective, like the Bible talks about all the time, renewing of the mind. That's what I'm hoping a lot of people that watch these videos are doing, that they're renewing their mind, that they're thinking differently, that they're saying, hold on. What about this? What about this? What about this? OK, it is the renewing of the mind that allows you to come into a higher and higher place. Single black woman looking for a good man. So that's why you see yeah. someone like Lonnie Love who's in a normal life phase thing, right? Like so when you are in your 20s, you might want to build. But most women, by most people by their 30s or 40s, you want to build with a partner. And when it's hard to find a partner because there are real issues of a dis like disparities in numbers, who's eligible, who's ready, you're sad. Mm. You know, so her loneliness. Her so I don't mean to chop into her, but she's got so many really great nuggets. Um, but again, about she's talking about, oh, you want to build with somebody, you want to build with somebody fast. Um, one of the things that, I, again, I've learned, especially in the black community, and this is something that we don't talk about a lot in the black community, is that a lot of black women really want to date men their own age. And when we say their own age, we're generally talking about maybe one year below their age or maybe three to five years above their age. And as women get older, that age range should actually expand. Only black women seem to have this issue. Um, DOS, what we call DOS, descendants of slaves. Um, they're the only ones that seem to have this issue. When you start to talk about to talk to women who are from Africa, for instance, they don't really care as much. You, it's easy to see a 30 year old African woman very much interested in a 45 year old black man, right? That's, that's normal in their culture. Um, you see the same thing in, um, you know, for South America, you see a little bit of that in the Caribbean where it's not as much of a big deal. You know, if a man is 10 years older, but in America, we have to realize that we have a society that likes to push certain things. And it's generally for their agenda. There's a financial agenda attached to almost everything that happens in America. So we don't always get the best information. That being said, I am not telling women to go out and date men 15 years older than you. But I am saying look for the heart of the man. Look for what he's trying to do, where he's trying to go. Right now in CSC, um, we have lots of men over 45 who have zero children, who want children, and they're trying to find wives. And what happens sometimes is they will try to talk to maybe a woman that's 35, and then that 35-year-old doesn't want to talk back to them because she's saying, oh, well, you're too old. But he's saying, I'm trying to talk to you because you don't have children yet. And all the women my age have children. And I really just kind of want to start fresh. And see, this is where that again, that issue comes in, because if you're dating a little bit older, you're going to get access to more men. But if you're saying I'm 35 and I'm only going to date guys that are maximum 39, 
you're missing out on even more men that are out there. Now, I will tell you, if you date an older guy, he needs to be healthy. He needs to be in shape. You know, he needs to be doing what he needs to do. And you still need to be attracted to him. But it's really not that much of a difference, especially these days between somebody in about 10 years. 10 years of age really is not that big of a deal. All right. So uh, I would hope that a lot more African-American women, DOS women will recognize that there is a lot bigger pool out here than what you think that there is. Her tears are definitely real and felt by a lot of women. And, and you know, it, it's, a, it's a trying situation for women who are hyper-focused on only dating black men. I guess that was it, but I really enjoyed what that particular lady had to say. I thought she had a lot of really great nuggets um, you know, that we could talk about today. I also like the fact that whether you liked her style or didn't like her style, she was put together. She, she looked nice. She had a nice outfit on, you know, she had just a little bit of makeup, you know, she had her earrings, you know, she was looking nice. And again, that's one of the things that I talk about a lot of times when it comes to it, because, you know, again, I mean, it's important how you look and guys as well, you know, it is important how you look you know, when you're going out here. Now, heart posture <laughs> is even more important, you know. Um, and like I say, one of the biggest problems I see with a lot of beautiful women is that they're not nice people. They think they're nice, but they're really not nice people or they're arrogant or they think that they deserve the world. So it's really important to talk about that as well. But honestly, what the lady said, I 99, 98% agree with, except for the fact that it's a problem. She sees it as a problem, I don't. And I see the problem in the fact of the education. I see the problem in the fact of, you know, dealing with the pain. So maybe I'm not 98, maybe I'm more like 90% or 85% in agreement, because um, I do see those things as, um, as big problems. But what I don't see as a problem is the numbers, the, the raw numbers. And she actually gave what I consider to be serious, real, raw numbers. I really thought she was going to go to another place with that. But um, no, she gave real, raw numbers. Um, the raw numbers, like I say, that I came up with myself is about 88 to 100, 88 men for about 100 women. And uh, she came up with 84. But again, I don't see that as a problem. It's like this, you know, if I go into a church and I am sitting as a single man in a church and I've heard this by a lot of Christian women, they say, oh, so many, you know, uh, women in your church, you know, that are single, you know, you should be able to find anything. Well, I'm looking around the room. I'm looking for somebody who matches me. I'm looking for somebody who's attractive to me and I'm looking for somebody that has their life in my mind together. So when I run into a woman who doesn't look like me. And what I mean by that is I'm not the most stylish dude in the world. So I'm not looking for a woman who's super stylish, but this woman has no style at all. Um, or I'm looking at a woman who might be close to my age, but she looks 10 years older because she hasn't taken care of her skin. She hasn't taken care of her body. She hasn't taken care of her hair. See, the, these, these women become disqualified. And I'm not trying to beat them up because every woman is beautiful, but you have to put in the effort. You have to put in the effort every day. So when you start to put it all together, women, because women see all these single women, but they're not recognizing what are men looking for. And like from a man's perspective, I see all these single men, but it took a while for me to understand what single women were looking for. So there's plenty of people out here but you have to get your eyes, ears, and even your own self ready to go get the best of those people because that's what people want. Everybody wants the best or at least, you know, in the top 30%. Nobody wants the bottom 30%. But luckily for all of us that, and I know you watching, that you're going to start making changes. Come on now, make changes so you won't be in the bottom 30%. Get yourself into the top 30, 40%, and you'll be smacking people away from you. And that's what you want so that you have more opportunities with better people to find your fit. Anyway, please like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.